Combs has been charged with RICO conspiracy. He used his business and employees of that business and other close associates to get his way. One employee that's come under the microscope in the Sean Diddy Combs saga, his former chief of staff, Christina Corum. Combs once called her his right hand. I take a look at where she could fall into this case. Welcome to Crime Fix. I'm Anjanette Levy. Christina Corum isn't a name you've probably heard before, but she was a key part of Sean Combs' life for years. I first told you about Corum here on Crime Fix back in April after the raids on Combs' homes. Corum's LinkedIn account, which was deleted many months ago, said that she joined Bad Boy Entertainment in 2013 and became Combs' day-to-day manager. That title makes you think that she was likely running his schedule and was likely involved in every aspect of his life. So it leads you to believe there's probably no one who knows Sean Combs better and what he's like than Christina Corum. Corum later became the director for the office of the chairman. And then in 2020, she was promoted, earning the title of Diddy's chief of staff. Corum worked for Combs during the time that he's being accused of a racketeering conspiracy using his businesses and employees to commit and cover up a number of crimes, including sex trafficking. But Corum does not face any criminal charges. I want to be very clear about that. She has been named in one civil lawsuit filed by a record producer, and I'll tell you more about the allegations made against her in that suit in a bit. But as far as the crimes that Sean Combs is accused of committing, the U.S. attorney said that Sean Combs didn't commit his crimes alone. Damian Williams said Combs had help. Combs has been charged with RICO conspiracy. He used his business and employees of that business and other close associates to get his way. Those individuals allegedly included high-ranking supervisors in the business, personal assistants, security staff, and household staff. The indictment alleges that those individuals facilitated the freak-offs. They booked the hotel rooms and stocked them with the supplies, including drugs, baby oil, personal lubricant, extra linens, and lighting. When the hotel rooms got damaged, they helped clean it up. They arranged for victims and commercial sex workers to travel for the freak-offs, and they delivered large quantities of cash to Combs to pay for the commercial sex workers. The indictment also alleges that they helped Combs cover up his crimes. During the March 2016 incident at the L.A. hotel that I mentioned earlier. I want to tell you about a great free app. It's called Upside, and it will give you cash back on things like food and gas. This is not a confusing rewards program. Upside will give you actual money that you can transfer straight into your bank account. Download Upside and claim an offer for whatever you're buying and pay as usual with a debit or credit card. I've used Upside and got nine bucks back on gas and pizza. You can't beat that. You can use Upside at places like Shell, Exxon, 7-Eleven, Chipotle, Dairy Queen, Taco Bell, KFC. That's just to name a few. To find out how much you could earn, click the link in the description to download Upside or scan the QR code on your screen. Use promo code CRIMEFIX and get an extra 25 cents back on every gallon on your first tank of gas. That's promo code CRIMEFIX for an extra 25 cents back on your first gallon of gas. Now, that 2016 incident that he referenced was the beating of Cassie Ventura at a hotel in Los Angeles. And we don't know if Christina Corum was involved in that or not, and she has not been charged with any crimes. I talked with former federal prosecutor Nima Romani about Christina Corum. I want to ask you about Christina Corum, his former chief of staff. He called her his, you know, his right hand. She was with him for years. How much trouble could she be in? Corum is in a lot of trouble. She is probably the one at least if you look at the allegations in the civil lawsuits, that has the most exposure. Diddy, of course, called her his right hand. And there, some of the lawsuits, I believe Little, Little Rod's lawsuit especially, named her as a defendant. And there's some very damning allegations against her that she had a fanny pack and would provide the drugs to uh, Diddy and the sex workers. Um, she would arrange for the commercial sex workers to be flown in. So, again, those are just allegations in a civil lawsuit. But I think of all the individuals that work for Diddy, I think she appears to be the closest to these freak-offs and the one that's probably the closest to being indicted if she doesn't cooperate. Do you have a feeling on whether or not she probably is cooperating already? I think she should cooperate if she's not. And if she's not cooperating, that's the person I lean on the most. When I was a prosecutor... 
the two best sources of information for me always were exes, husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, and employees, current and former. They know where the bodies are buried. So I would contact Christina Horam if I were prosecuting this case. I'd have her come in with her lawyer, and I would explain that she has significant criminal exposure if we decide to charge her and that she should cooperate uh, to save herself. And very likely she would. Again, I want to be clear. At this point, Christina Corum is not facing any criminal charges. And we don't know if investigators or prosecutors have spoken to her. Corum was very important to Sean Combs. We do know that. And he had even written about her on social media in the past. Meet Christina Corum, Chief of Staffs at Combs Enterprises. Christina, a.k.a. KK, keeps everything in my life and my business running. She's been my right hand for the last eight years and has consistently proven to execute and get S-word done. Don't know how I'd function without her. In another post, Diddy wrote, Happy birthday to my ace boon coon, my right hand, my day-to-day manager that keeps my world twirling, and she's always got my back. She makes sure that I smile every day and I don't go into those dark places. Today is your day. It's your mother effing birthday. Go KK, it's your birthday. Love you, at Christina Corum. Now, Christina Corum has deleted all of her social media accounts. They've been dark for months. While Corum and other employees of Combs have not been charged with any crimes, Corum has been named in a civil suit filed by record producer Rodney Little Rod Jones that included explosive allegations about both Combs and Corum. First, Little Rod claimed Mr. Combs' chief of staff, Christina Corum, known as KK, instructs her staff to retrieve drugs so she can provide them to Mr. Combs for his consumption. A footnote in the suit filed by Little Rod says, Defendant Corum instructed her staff, Brendan Paul, Frankie Santella, and Moy Bond to spike bottles of champagne with ecstasy. Upon information and belief, this occurred the day of December 31st, 2022, the New Year's Eve party. Little Rod claims that he complained to Corum about sexual advances from Combs and that she responded, Sean will be Sean, and downplayed Combs groping him as horseplay, stating, he's just showing that he likes you. Jones also called Corum the Ghislaine Maxwell to Sean Combs's Jeffrey Epstein, claiming she required employees to walk around with fanny packs of cocaine, GHB, and ecstasy to keep Combs high and much more. Coincidentally, a number of those drugs were mentioned by the U.S. attorney at a press conference last week. For his part, Sean Combs's lawyer, Mark Agnifilo, said that Combs has committed no crimes. His resolve is the same. Um, he believes he's innocent. Uh, I believe he's innocent. And we're going to fight this case with all of our might until we don't have to fight any longer. But the U.S. attorney has said this investigation is far from over, which makes you wonder, could Combs's employees be in prosecutors' sights? We are not done. This investigation is ongoing. And I encourage anyone with information about this case to come forward and to do it quickly. Anyone with information can call one 1- Eight seven seven four hsi tip I want to express my deep appreciation for the victims and witnesses who have used their voices and helped bring this criminal conduct to light. We would not be here without them. I want to bring in Jenny Alcotti. She's a trial attorney at Babin Law, and she specializes in human trafficking. Jenny, your thoughts, first of all, on the indictment of Sean Combs all of these years later for these allegations. I think that we have seen um, a bit of justice. I think that um, more absolutely can probably be done, but um, specifically with the minor indictments um, that didn't get, um, I think, fully prosecuted on the merits. But I do think that we are seeing justice um, really being, I think we're finding justice for survivors of human trafficking and people are really starting to use their voices and understanding that this is not um, normal. And it's nice that society is also starting to recognize human trafficking as a whole. The feds have obviously said Sean Combs did not do this alone. That is the allegation that he used his businesses uh, and his employees to commit these crimes. So They've been put on notice in a way. The employees of Sean Combs have been put on notice through this indictment that we could be coming for you. You are a part of this. And so you kind of have a choice here. You can cooperate 
or you can maybe be a defendant, or maybe you are, are going to be a defendant. So we have this woman, Christina Corum, who Sean Combs, decide, he described her as his right hand. She's been mentioned in a civil lawsuit as somebody who provided drugs to people at these freak off parties. When you look at this, I mean, how much trouble do you think she could be in? I mean, I do think that she's probably going to be a key witness, defendant, could be a primary person for um, this lawsuit because at the end of the day, Diddy did say that he posted numerous posts about her too, like praising her for all the work that she's done. He's made birthday posts. So it was very clear and apparent that she was his right hand. And so to assume potentially that she would not have had some type of knowledge or potential facilitation in these crimes, I think is um, a little bit troublesome. And I think that for her, probably she, it would behoove her or benefit her to cooperate at this point. The allegations that have been made against her in the Little Rod suit um, are basically that, you know, she was the maestro um, along with Diddy in some of these freak offs. And, you know, obviously Sean Combs is saying, hey, I am not guilty. I did not commit a crime here. His lawyer said he's not a perfect person, but he's not a criminal. So um, when you're being accused of bringing in drugs, helping to transport people for prostitution, arranging these freak offs that the federal government says were a crime. Um, I mean, that's you have a lot of liability potentially. You know, they you know, obviously Sean Combs has denied the criminal charges, but he's also denied the allegations in the Little Rod suit. Um, but there are photographs and some other documentary evidence that have been provided with that. Um, you know, what what is your reaction to a woman being involved with this. She's been likened in the Little Rod suit to Ghislaine Maxwell. Um, it, I, I have one of two ways um, that I have seen this in my practice and in my area of expertise is that in human trafficking, typically you do see traffickers um, using women as almost a bottom to entice other women to come and aid in the facilitation of these crimes. So it's not uncommon actually um, to see that. And the other side of it though, is that as a woman, um, for somebody who is above them in power, it could be intimidating and it's very, it, it's um, terrifying for you to potentially go against what it is that that person is asking you to do. So um, I think it's one of two, it could be or it could be two of two. She could have been scared, but also two, she could have been a facilitator in it as well. That's a, there is a power dynamic there with Sean Combs being the employer and Christina Corum being the employee. So is there any defense there? There could be a defense. Um, it, it, it really just depends though, too. I mean, it could be that it, it depends on the totality of the circumstances, right? Was, were there any threats? Were there any coercive um, means to get her to do some of these things? Um, especially when you're in the public eye like that, you don't know what could have been said or what could have been done to not only her, but potentially her family, um, her friends. It's, it's a little bit, it puts her in a tough spot. And like you said, with the power dynamic and especially an employee-employer relationship, there could be claims um, and defenses that she could make or counterclaims. One thing that I think will be argued at trial by Sean Combs was that you might not like my freak off parties, but these were consensual. Because at this point in time, we have charges involving one victim and that one victim is Cassie. Uh, it's quite obvious that's who they're referring to in the indictment. So um, wh what do you think about that? The argument that this was a consensual partnership between she and um, Sean Combs, that he'll make that argument that you might, you might not like the way this looks, that I've got all these videotapes, but you know, she, she was a willing participant. It, it depends. Um, I, can't recall. Is Cassie a minor? Sorry. I can't no. Remember. She, okay. Ca um, Cassie was not a minor. So because she's an adult, I do, I have seen it where it is a little bit more difficult because obviously the law protects minors more where regardless if you consented, it's not consent. So as an adult, unfortunately, 
there is that argument that if she did in fact consent, then it's not, uh, it's a consensual agreement. But I do think, again, if there are means of force, fraud or coercion, and they can show that, then there was no consent. Even if you were to try and say that she agreed to something, if it was through the means of force, fraud or coercion, then it's not. As somebody who specializes in human trafficking, do you expect more to come of this? Absolutely. I do think um, there's a couple things. I think we'll see more um, victims, survivors start to speak up potentially. Um, I think we'll also see more um, defendants start to arise out of this as well as the investigation continues. And I do think it's important that, and it's good that this is in the public's eye to recognize that individuals that are publicly known could be dangerous. And it's good that there are, um, it is being reported on more frequently. Jenny Alcotti, I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thank you, Angela. And that's it for this episode of Crime Fix. I'm Anjanette Levy. Thanks so much for being with me. I'll see you back here next time.